Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to another episode of our EVE Online Guide for Complete Beginners. In part one and part two of this series, we completed the in-game tutorial. Well, technically, we have one more step of the tutorial um, that it's prompting us to do, but we can more or less ignore it. Um, and uh, now what we're going to do is we are going to learn, first of all, we're going to learn how to travel between systems, which is very easy to do. And then we are going to pick up our first career agent job, and we are going to learn the in industry side, the industrial side of EVE Online, which is going to involve doing some mining and some crafting. And it's very, very, very cool. By the way, Control F9 toggles the user interface over here. So Aura here wants us to choose a career agent. You know what I'm going to do? Because the tutorial is basically over, I'm just going to go ahead and like quit the tutorial here. So that we don't, we're not getting any of the Aura pop-ups. Sorry, Aura, no offense, but we don't need you anymore. So what we're going to do is she wants us to go to the agency, go to the agents and mission tab over here, and go to career agents. And I said at the end of the last episode, career agents and mission agents are similar in, in a great many ways. But career agents give you missions that are well suited as a tutorial, as a beginner. They will introduce concepts to you and also give you tons of free stuff. You don't want to skip on this. Um, so we're going to go to career agents. All of these career agents are in the same place. They're all in the Kouster system, which is three jumps away. They're all at the same space station, the Federal Navy Aca Naval Academy. Let's close this for a second and talk about where we are. In the top left corner, we can see where we are. We are in the Durapint system, which is in the Crux constellation, which is in the Essence region. And specifically, we are close to planet Durapint 7, the seventh planet in this system, and we're quite near to the 21st moon of this planet. That's where we are located at this time. Um, the number over here, 1.0, is a very, very, very important part of EVE Online. This is the security status of this system. 1.0 is the highest security status there is in EVE. Um, anything from 0.5 and above, I believe, is, is high sec, high security systems. Although really, like 0.7 and above is, is true high sec, as high as possible. What does high security mean? This means uh, Concord, the space cops, are very active here. If someone were to attack us in this system, the space cops would almost instantly warp to us and obliterate the enemy. And by that, by, by someone, I mean another player. Not, not a non-player character, not an NPC, not a rat, as it's referred to in EVE Online. But if another player attacked us, the space cops would almost immediately jump on top of them and just obliterate them. The space cops will kill everyone really, really fast. The lower the security rating you're in, the longer it takes for the space cops, Concord, to respond. And at a certain point, they might stop responding. In particular, once you hit zero, that is known as nullsec, null security. And in fact, technically it goes below zero for various things as well. But zero and below, that is full on lawlessness. Anyone can attack you at any time with no repercussions whatsoever. Nullsec is awesome. There's tons of good stuff to do there. Lots of riches to do, but um, it can make you poop your pants a little bit. So uh, it is definitely worth considering because it's fun. Don't ignore it. Don't be like, no, I don't want to go there. I'm just going to play in high security. But for the purposes of this beginner's guide that we're doing here, we're going to spend our time mostly in high security. So we have to go and get to where these career agents are. So how do we do that? Our career agents, we know we're in Durapint, and that's not the button I wanted to hit. Sorry, right over here. Our career agents, they're all in Kouster. So we want to set a destination. We want to plan to go there. It's three jumps away. So you can, again, right click on anything to do stuff. Hey, set destination. Also in this user interface, there's a little button here to set destination. If we hit this, we're gonna need a new little pop-up over here. Again, you might not have the, the skilling spree thing. This is an event that's going on in EVE currently. We have now set a destination. I don't need this window. Uh, let me just hide this. We have a route. So our destination is the Kouster system. Our next jump to get there is Renin. If we go ahead and open up our galactic map by hitting the map button over here, we we'll actually get a highlighted route. We got this blue sparkly route now. It's going to show us where we're going to go. We are in Durapint. We're going to go through Renin, then through Algogile. I, I can't pronounce most of these things. And then over to Kouster over here. So three jumps. One, two, three. All these systems are fairly high security. So the 1.0, all the starter systems are 1.0. 0. 0.9, that's, that's about as high security as you're going to get in high security. It's really high security. 0. 0.9, 0. 0.9, 0. 0.9, totally safe. Nothing for us to worry about from other players over here. We'll see other players. Um... If they've tried anything, and it's possible, it would basically be a suicide on their part. They would basically be committing suicide to attack you. Some people will do that, and that's that's going to be okay. We're actually going to learn in a second, hey, what happens if our ship gets blown up? 
What if we literally, literally just blew up our ship right now? What if we self-destructed? How would we deal with that? I think there's a good learning opportunity. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think if we self-destruct, we should get our capsule. I've actually never done this. You know what? Let's not do it now because I've got some stuff in my cargo hold that I want to use for our next tutorial. Anyway, okay. We've set a route. We've got our destination. Don't worry. We'll be building up our ship real soon here. It's going to be exciting. We've got a route. We've got a destination. How do we actually get there? Well, to go from system to system, we can't just warp to it. Systems are too far away for us to warp. Instead, we have to use jump gates or stargates to jump from system to system. Now, they show up in your map as these round circles with a little arrow. Here's a stargate over here that lets you jump to a system. This will let us jump to the Trosquessary system. This jump gate, round circle with an arrow, jumps to the Renin system. Hey, the Renin system is our next stop on our path. Notice how it's yellow. When you have a destination, a jump gate will be highlighted in yellow to let you know that it's on the next route. What I can do here is I can right click on it. Now I can warp to it and whatever, but what I'm gonna do is jump. Just like how we, we automated the task of docking to a station, we're gonna automate the task of jumping. We're gonna click jump. First our ship is gonna line to that stargate. Then it's gonna activate the warp. It's gonna warp to it. And then once it's completed the warp, it will jump through the stargate. At any point, if you decide to sort of change your mind, now once you're warping, you're locked into the warp, but you can just go ahead and hit the stop button by hitting the minus button over here or control space bar, and you can cancel the next step. If you decide you don't want to jump, you can just sort of control space bar, and then when you, when you end your warp, you won't go through the jump step if you'd like. So this is manually jumping. What's going to happen if we do this? It's going to warp to zero, like within zero meters of this thing, or as close as it can possibly get, and then jump right away. Your ship also has an autopilot feature, which I will showcase as soon as we are done this jump over here. <laughs> so there's our jump gate. All the jump gates look, or the star gates look dramatically different. Uh, it is pretty cool though, I gotta say. Very funky. There's some lots of NPC friendly police ships patrolling around this. Very safe, these gates and high security. So now we are jumping and we are in a new system. We are now in the Renin system. And why are we all see-through? When you jump into a new system, and we haven't actually talked about the little things that show up over here, the various sort of buffs and debuffs, the little effects. When you jump into a new system, you are cloaked for one minute. You are completely invisible and actually invulnerable as well. Even if a giant nuclear explosion went off next to you, you wouldn't be affected. As soon as you do anything, this goes away. If I were to double click, by the way, I haven't talked about this. If you double click in space, your ship will turn and start moving in that direction. Kind of nifty. Doesn't doesn't come up very much, but it is really cool. So now we're moving in this direction over here. As soon as I issued that command, the cloak broke, and I'm technically vulnerable. That way, if you jump into a system, you have a minute to breathe. Look around. Make sure everything's cool. There you go. Excellent. So we've got that. Now, we have to now jump to the Algo Gale system. We're still two jumps away from our destination. So again, I could right-click and choose jump. And what the jump will do, again, it will align to the target. It will warp to within zero. And then when warp is done, it'll jump through the jump gate. The other thing I can do is down here, there's a little autopilot button. Right here, the little A at the bottom of your screen. If you click this, autopilot is engaged. The autopilot will fly through your entire route without you having to do anything whatsoever. It's very, very, very convenient. But that convenience does come at a slight price. Instead of jumping to within zero meters of the target, right? So when we do it manually, it, it warps us to within zero meters of the target and then is able to immediately jump through the Stargate. Autopilot will warp you to 15 kilometers away from the target. And that means you will then have to fly in a non-warp speed to the target. Now, the autopilot will handle that for you. It'll drop you out of warp within 15 kilometers, fly to the jump gate, and then jump through it when it gets close enough. But that means that there's going to be a period of time. I don't know if it's going to take you 10 seconds or 20 seconds. It'll depend on the speed of your ship. You can see here 15 kilometers, and there we go. We're out of warp. And now the ship is going to accelerate. You see the acceleration down here. It's all happening automatically. It's going to approach this gate and then jump through it when it gets close. If you are in a dangerous area of space, a low security area of space, this is a period of time where you are vulnerable to being attacked. And in particular, if you're hauling a, if you're a very valuable ship, um, even if you weren't in dangerous area of space, it might be worth for someone to suicide to kill you. And then they'll switch to an alt or have one of their teammates come over and loot your stuff from your destroyed corpse. Suicide ganks are a viable gameplay option to destroy very valuable ships. You don't have to worry about this with your little critters. If someone wanted to do it, they'd be losing money. It wouldn't hurt you one bit. But you see this whole like delay? This is a time when you're sort of vulnerable. Not only that, it's technically it's slower, right? 
we would already be in the next system, already warping to the next jump gate if we had done this manually instead of being on autopilot. Autopilot is a little bit slower and a little bit more dangerous, but it's very convenient. I've got him toggled off the autopilot here, so I will simply jump to the next system here in Couster, like this, and I'll do it manually. At some point, we're going to talk about this cargo container. See this yellow cargo container? This is not the same as the yellow from your autopilot. Yellow things in this list, see how you mouse over it says restricted access? This cargo container belongs to someone else. If I were to go over there and loot this cargo container, I would be flagged as a suspect in a crime. And for the next, I believe, 15 minutes, any other player, any capsuleer, we'll talk about the lore in a little bit, are free to attack me because I'm suspected of, of a crime. Now, the space cops, Concord, will not attack me if I'm only a suspect. But other players can. So there's anything in your screen that's mapped yellow other than your autopilot destination. So here is the autopilot route to the station that I want to go to. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to warp to it. Uh, sorry, dock to it. Um, anything else that's yellow, be a little concerned be, and be careful. Now, luckily, by default, the game is set up to not let you do things that'll let you be flagged as a suspect or a criminal, which is the next level up. This little get green pip right over here by our, I don't know, capacitor loadout or whatever this is called. This is your safety on your ship. When it's green, it's not gonna let you do anything that would get you flagged as a suspect or a criminal. If we click on this, we can switch to partial safety. If I do this, now it's yellow. Now the game will let me do stuff that will get me flagged as a suspect, but still won't let me do things that will get me flagged as a criminal. So if I were to accidentally say target another player and try to shoot, the game would be like, whoa, 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 whoa. This will make you a criminal. You're trying to attack an innocent player, and it won't let it won't let me do that by default, unless I switch the safety to disabled completely. So for you, in high security space like this, you're probably going to want to leave the safety on green until you sort of know that you want to do slightly nefarious things. You know, sometimes it's totally worth going and and trying to loot a yellow canister because there might be something really valuable in it. I don't know. I'm going to leave that up to you. All right, here we are docked at the Federal Navy Academy. And you'll see there's a tab here for agents. There's also guests. Here's everyone who's in the station. We got 71 people currently docked at the station. Look at that. Oh, we should talk about some of these colors too, since we're talking about that. These green stars, these are people in our corporation. In EVE Online, you always have to be in a corporation. If you're not, if you're not in a real corporation, a player-run corporation, you'll be part of a um, NPC corporation for sort of newbies. And these are other people in that corporation. It doesn't really do anything. Doesn't, it doesn't really mean anything, but it's there. Somewhere in here, see this guy with the yellow skull? This guy's a suspect. If he were to fly out into space, anyone could attack him without repercussion. So he's probably just parked here and waiting for that 15 minute suspect flag to go away. I think it's 15 minutes anyway. Um, you can also see that in local chat sometimes. Uh, if I go and expand this and go to local chat, see we got some green things. This is everyone in the system. So 98 people in this current star system. And you can look through here and sometimes you'll see things. There's Heavy Smoker again, that, that suspect over there. Uh, and sometimes you'll see people with, um, I guess, flashing red stuff. Those are criminals. Criminals who will get attacked by space cops. If you're in a high sex system, criminals won't last long because the space cops will go and take care of them. I may be a little bit wrong about the coloration. Don't quote me on it. And as usual, check the comments down below for real experts in this game who will give you some feedback. Okay, so we are here to do an agent mission and we're gonna do the industry mission and learn about mining. So the agent list on the left, we've got the business career path, exploration, advanced military, military and industry. We're gonna do industry over here. So we're gonna talk to Temestre Fessent over here. We can double click on her. We can right click on her and say start conversation or we can click this little button over here. Either way, we're gonna have a chat with Temestre. So, making mountains out of mole molehills. This is a 10 part sort of mission that we've got over here. And it's super worth doing. The flavor text is, is quite interesting for a lot of these. I'm gonna not read these because I'm gonna try to save my voice. Our mission here is she wants us to mine 1000 units of Veldspar. Veldspar is a very common ore. She wants us to mine this and return it to her. So we have to have 1000 units of Veldspar and then we have to drop it off at this location. This location here, Cowster's second planet, first moon, Federal Navy Academy. That's where we are now. She wants us to get this and bring it back to her. Um, and if we accept this mission, right away we will be given a minor one. So it's a mining module, level one mining module. Our reward for completing this, 285,000 ISK and an additional 233,000 if we complete it within six hours. It's only gonna take us like five minutes to do it at most, but you know, keeps you going. Oh, this mission's got a little collateral. We're gonna have to put up $1. 
I guess in exchange for this mining thing to accept this this mission. Sounds great to me. I'm gonna go ahead and accept this. Done. So um, how do we mine you guys? All right, let's take a look at our ship fitting. So we're gonna close this window and we're gonna hit the ship fitting button again. We've looked at it a couple times. The tutorial got us to equip a couple of guns. Hey, that's great. But what we don't have right now is the ability to mine. We need a mining module on our ship to be able to mine some stuff. Our initial startup ship actually started with one. Oh, you know what? This would be a great idea, to, a great time to demonstrate what happens if you lose your ship. Let's talk about that. If I go over to my inventory over here, so here's my inventory. So, right, so I have my ship here, my Velator. Excellent. I'm gonna left click on the Velator. I'm gonna click leave ship. This is exactly the same thing that would happen if our ship were blown up for any reason. We would now be in our capsule. This is the ship we're piloting right now. This is just basically a tiny little escape pod, tiny little ship, but it's still a ship. If your ship gets blown up in space, you will suddenly find yourself ejected out in your capsule here. By the way, your characters are known as capsuleers for this reason. And this is a fully functional ship. You can fly around with it. You can go between systems. You can do all that. You cannot, however, fit any modules whatsoever. It has no slots, so you can't really, you can't really do anything with it, but you can go everywhere with it, and it's totally fine. So now that we've lost our ship, quote unquote, how do we get it back? Well, first of all, we're gonna go in inventory. If we check the ship hangar, we can see we got two ships in this in this um, uh, starbase. There's the capsule, which is green because that's what we're piloting, and then there's our Velator over here, our Corvette. So I can right click on this, and I can say make active, and then I'll be back into this. The interesting thing as well, let's say we didn't have it because it had been blown up. Actually, let's do something totally crazy. I'm gonna right click this Velator. I'm gonna, I don't think I have to do this, I don't remember. I'm gonna strip fittings. All the parts that were installed on this Velator, I'm gonna strip them off by doing this. I can, I can also do it through the fitting screen, but I'll just do this, strip fitting. So this is now gonna be a naked ship. I'm gonna check the cargo hold of the ship. So we had some stuff in our ship's cargo hold. I'm gonna grab all these, I'm gonna drag it to the item hanger. So this is in the Starbase. The item hanger is in the Starbase. So our Velator is got nothing in its cargo hold and it's been stripped of all fittings. I'm now gonna right click on this and trash the ship. What? Oh my God, it's our only ship, you guys. What are we gonna do? Well, as a capsuleer, we are very important people. As such, our corporation or, or empire or whatever the flavor is for it, always offers us a complimentary Corvette, no matter where we are in the entirety of this game. Over here on the right, just below Undock, there's a button that says board my Corvette. It says click to board your complimentary Corvette. We're gonna click this. We're gonna get a brand new Velator. Shiny and new, not a scratch on it. Lovely. An exact duplicate of the ship that we started the tutorial with. Oh, hey, look at that. If we take a look at the fitting screen, we even have our original fittings. We have a civilian Gatling gun, a civilian miner, and a civilian afterburner. Boom. You can always get an extra, a new Corvette whenever you want. By the way, you can rename your ship as well. Change name, Brussels Sprout, yeah, it remembers names that you like to use. There you go, this is now the Brussels Sprout. Woo, excellent. Okay, so enough of that. We have a mission to do some mining. Now your default ship does actually come with a civilian miner, but a civilian miner is slow. See in this tooltip, it says it mines at seven cubic meters for every 10 seconds. Um, and actually, if we right click on this and say, click show details, so this is the civilian miner, it's got numerous different tabs. The civilian miner actually um, doesn't even mine at the seven me cubic meters. Oh, maybe rounding. It's 6.90. Yeah, there we go. I was gonna say the base value is six. The civilian miner mines at a rate of six cubic meters per mining cycle, which is 10 seconds. We have a few mining skills that we started off with with our character, so we'd actually mine at 6.90. So that's our speed, about seven. Oh my God, there's a giant thunderstorm outside. I can hear the lightning. I hope it doesn't kill my, uh, my internet or my power. Um, yes, so this. That is, that is pretty slow. Could we do better? Well, we were just given a minor one, not civilian. Again, everything that says civilian is garbage. We got a minor one as part of accepting this mission. So right over here, if I right click on this and say show info, mining amount, 40 cubic meters. And this is before modifiers, so right? The civilian one is six, this is 40. Oh my God, that's a lot faster. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on this old civilian miner. I'm going to unfit it. And now this minor one that's in here, I'm gonna drag it in here. Boom. And then if we mouse over, we'll actually see, oh, we're actually gonna mine at 46 cubic meters per second as a result of our skills. Oh, that is so much better. Now this has the old civilian Gatling gun because I did go and destroy my ship. I'm gonna go ahead and unfit this as well. And I'm gonna equip one of these light electron blasters instead. I'm then gonna go ahead and load it, done. And I'm gonna take the rest of these iron charges here 
I'm just going to shift click to select them both. I'm going to drag them both into my inventory over here. Lovely. So I have a miner, I have guns. I could equip two miners to mine twice as fast, but I kind of like the idea of having a gun over here. So we're going to go ahead with this ship and we've got to mine out a little bit of Eldspar. Not much. We only need a thousand units, which is basically nothing. So we're going to undock. And for this mission, we've got a specific spot we're supposed to mine the Veldspar from. I don't actually know if... And, and the, the mission says you have to mine it from there. I don't know if you have to, but we will. So, um, yeah, so we have a location to warp to as part of our agent mission. Agent mission over here, warp to location. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And there should be a big old rock for us to mine. There may or may not be an enemy. Hey, but that's what we've got guns for, right? Exactly. Do, do. So all the people in green here are people that are part of my starter corporation. When you see green people, that's what they are. They're part of your corporation. Which right now, again, our corporation is relatively meaningless because it's just one of these starter NPC corporations and doesn't really do anything. In fact, it's just costing us something. Um, when we complete missions, there's an 11% tax rate that our corporation is charging us. So it often is a high priority for people to um, either create their own, like, I I I like tax evasion corporation or join another corporation with a 0% tax rate. There are corporations out there that do charge tax rates, but then do tend to give you stuff for it. So we have just warped out over here. And it happens if I turn around, I can see the big old rock we're supposed to mine from. But let's say I'm like, oh God, where is it? I don't know. It's using like just trying to visually spot things, that is not the path to victory. Instead, we're going to take a look at the overview. So our overview over here, right? We're using that to see enemies. We're using it to see um, stargates. We're using that to find stations. Um, but we can also use this to find mineable stuff. There's actually a tab over here for mining. So there's a general tab, a mining tab, and a warp to tab. You can make more tabs and you can highly customize these tabs, but that is not a topic for this. Warp to, these are all the things in the solar system that you can actually right click and warp to. This includes just like random planets. Here's Kaustra 3 as a planet. There's not necessarily anything there, but you can warp to it. The mining tab will do two things. One, it'll show you anything that you can mine. So here's an asteroid over here. And it'll also highlight asteroid belts. So there are four asteroid belts in this system. We could go ahead and warp to one of the asteroid belts and mine that out. But where we are here, 6,000 meters away from us, there is a Veldspar asteroid, and it is our mission to go and mine that. So how do you mine? Well, your mining laser, which we have equipped here, works similarly to a weapon. What we have to do is we have to target something. So this asteroid over here, I'm going to go ahead and lock this target. Now we happen to know it's behind us. So there it is. It's getting locked on. Then with it locked on and selected, you're going to hit your miner. Now in this tooltip, our optimal range with this is 10 kilometers. Excellent. So I can stand here, hit this button, and we're going to start mining this asteroid. That's it. Now you'll see the little white circle here. When we're shooting, this white circle sort of cycled, I think, every two or three seconds or something like that. It's quite quick. With our mining laser, it cycles once every 10 seconds. And at the end of 10 seconds, we will get some of this Veldspar. If I open up my cargo bay, so here's my cargo bay with the Brussels sprout. You can see my ammo over here. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. I'm going to stack all, just stack the ammo together. There we go. So as soon as this is done a mining cycle, we're going to have a bunch of Veldspar ore in our cargo bay over here. Now, our cargo bay on a Velator has room for 135 cubic meters of stuff. Which actually isn't terrible. This is this is a fair amount of space at this point um, that you'd want th for what you need. But in the long term, it's really not much. And in particular, when you're mining, it's not very much. This will fill up very quickly. Now, you can find ships with larger and larger cargo bays. The very large cargo bays are known as, as haulers and various industrial ships. They have large cargo bays, and they can carry a lot of things from point A to point B. There we go. We got some Veldspar. Um, there are also dedicated mining ships. Mining ships are interesting because their cargo bays tend to be fairly small, but instead, we're going to talk about this drone bay later on, but then they'll have an ore bay. And so this is a dedicated storage that only fits ore, but it's going to be large. In, and very quickly in this mission, we're going to be given a venture ship. And the venture has 5,000 cubic meters of space for ore. Plus, it mines a lot faster. So we're going to go ahead and stop the mining over here, which I can do by just toggling off my mining laser or just running away. This popped up because we have enough. No, we don't have enough. I need 1,000 units. I only have six. Oh, man. Dirt. I interrupted that, that cycle for nothing. Yeah, we need 1,000 units for this. So we're going to let another cycle go by. I know. It's very exciting content at this point. Um, I enjoy mining quite a bit. 
Um, especially since a lot of the places, the asteroid belts, there will often be NPC villains over there that you can spend your time pew pewing at while you're doing the mining. I, I enjoy doing it while doing things like watching Netflix. Admittedly, in high security mining, it, there's not a ton of excitement though. Um, as enjoyable as it is, it's not going to necessarily be super in, like, whoa, this is crazy sauce. But once you, if, if you move to a low security or even null security area and you do mining there, then it's a lot more exciting in that you might get murdered constantly while doing it. Now that might be a lot of fun or it might be very frustrating. Things of course get better if you're part of a large group of people, a corporation, a fleet, different things like that. You can have large groups of miners working together. There's actually ships that improve the rate at which you mine if they're nearby. They sort of command ships. Um, often what will happen is you'll have groups of miners working together where they'll fill their cargo hold, then eject the ore, and someone will come by with a freighter and pick up all the ore and then do delivery runs that way while everyone just keeps mining, which is great. Okay, we now have over a thousand units. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go and dock to our station once more. Right, we're returning to this station here. And we'll turn in this quest. We should get a venture out of this. But there you go, there's some mining. Easy. You can also get ships with mining drones. Drones are one of my favorite things in EVE Online. They're tons of fun to use. There's combat drones, there's drones for a huge variety of different jobs, including mining. And with the mining drones, it's, it's kind of amazing. You like warp out to say an asteroid belt, you release your drones and they just scatter and start mining from all the rocks and then they bring it to you and then they go back out and they bring it to you. And I find that that's, that's quite cool. Um, yeah, let's just dock. We'll turn this in. I think we'll get the venture right away. I'm not sure. There might be one other mission. They might want us to reprocess the ore. I don't remember the order of this. Well, we'll find out in a second. So, we've done this. We now have to go and turn in this completed quest. So, over on the right, we see Temestre over here. It's in green. This accepted mission. We can complete it. We can also use the shortcut key over here to start conversation, which I'm going to do. There we are. And we're going to hit complete mission right down here. Boom. So we're going to get a bunch of money. Excellent. And she's got another quest for me. So if I request another mission. Excellent. So what she wants now is she wants titanium or tritanium, I should say. And if we complete, if we give her tritanium, she will then give us a venture. The venture is the mining frigate. It is lovely. This is the thing that's got a bunch of uh, cargo capacity as well as massive bonuses to your mining speed. This is a great mission. We're going to look at the, the venture and drool over it in a second, but yeah, we get it for free. And then we get some extra money if we finish it fast enough. All we need to do is get her Tritanium. So, how do we give her Tritanium? Well, she, she mentions there we can use do reprocessing. So, Veldspar, which is what we mine. Let's take a look at our inventory. Right In our inventory, we've got a bunch of Veldspar. Uh, Veldspar is just ore. What we want to do is we need to reprocess the Veldspar and get the actual minerals out of it. In this case, Veldspar has Tritanium. If you right click on this, you can reprocess this over here. So it's got an exclamation mark because it's like, well, this will destroy the thing. But he, okay, that's fine. I'm going to reprocess the Veldspar. So it's going to reprocess 157. Well, it's not actually. It reprocesses it in um, 100 unit chunks. So it's actually just going to do 100 of this and leave us with 57. And it's going to produce something. You can see in this tooltip, it's going to give us 207 Tritanium. Note that there are a variety of skills that impact this. Reprocessing, reprocessing efficiency, and Veldspar processing are all skills you can have. And these will all impact how much stuff you get out of this. There's also a little bit of tax that you have to pay at the station to use this feature. Um, there's ways to lower this, and of course you can have player run stations that can have all kinds of different options there too. But I'm going to go ahead and reprocess this. So if we look, um, it did take all the Veldspar out of our inventory of our ship, but if we go to our item hangar, we'll find the 57 Veldspar, because you have to have at least 100 to process it, and we'll also find 207 units of Tritanium. So um, we should be able to complete this. It says cargo hold, but even if it's in our item hangar, we should be able to complete this over here. As long as it's in one uh, spot. If if parts of it were in one place and parts of it were another, we wouldn't be able to complete it. But as long as you get it all in one place, we should be able to hit complete mission, get our venture, and a bunch more money. So I'm not going to request the next mission right now. Because what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the venture. If I go to the ship hangar, you'll see you've got a venture over here. Now, it doesn't actually show up in the list on the left. Why is this? This venture is like, it's like an Ikea thing. It's currently packed up in a box. And you can tell that because it's got a quantity listed. Let's, let me give you an example. If I go over to the item hanger, um, you see these, um, these maybe these Gatling guns. See how they don't have a quantity listed? That's because they're not packaged up in a box. 
Um, same thing, oh, the afterburner is a good example. Both of these say one and one, and this one doesn't have a number. If I go and right click and say stack all, these two afterburners were stacked together in a quantity of two. This one is not because it's not boxed up. But we can go ahead and um, change this. If I re right click on the civilian afterburner, first of all, note, while I can buy this item, I cannot sell it from this pop-up menu. We'll talk about buying and selling later on, but I can't sell this. Whereas if I right click on this one, I can sell it. You can only sell things that have been packaged. So if I take this afterburner and I just hit repackage, it'll put it in a box. There you go. See, it's got a number now. And now if I stack, they'll all stack up and they can all be sold. Done and done. So my ship here, this adventure, is also in a box. I could right click on this, this venture and sell it if I wanted to, but I don't want to. What I want to do is I want to assemble the ship. Boom. So now I have Quill Solo's venture. It's in the list over here um, and it's ready to go. I guess it still has a quantity. No, there you go. Refresh the view by clicking out. It doesn't have a quantity. So we have a venture here. Now the venture is a frigate class ship. It's bigger than a, um, a Corvette, which is what's here. Let's go ahead and switch into it. I'm going to right click on this. And I'm going to say, make active. So we're going to get into our venture. And I think it's clearly an industrial ship, but I think it looks excellent. I really love the design of the ship, visually speaking. I think it's just lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Now, if we go into our fitting screen, this icon over here, we have no modules installed on this. This is a bare naked venture. So let's fix that. We're going to go into our inventory. What I'm going to do is my, my Velator over here, I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to strip out all the fittings so that we have access to them in our inventory again. I'm going to strip you down. Done. Excellent. And actually, I'll take the iron charges and put them in the item hanger. So now all our stuff is over here. Excellent. So we're going to open the fitting window and go to work on our venture. Actually, let's find out what makes the venture so special. If I right click on the venture here or here or anywhere, we're going to go get info. Show info, rather. And we're going to find out about this thing. So this is my Brussels sprout. Uh, sorry, I clicked on the Velator. My bad. The Venture. There we go. Quill Solo's Venture, which I can also rename. Um, change name. Get Rocked. There. That's our ship. Get Rocked. Uh, if I close this and reopen it. There. Get Rocked. So it's a Venture here. So the Venture has these bonuses over here. First of all, if we have the Mining Frigate skill... For every level of this skill, we get a bonus to our mining yield. So every cycle, every 10 seconds when the mining finishes, we're going to get 5% more rocks for every skill level. This also applies to glass, gas cloud harvesting, which is another thing. Not only that, though, but this venture, even ignoring your skills, starts off with a 100% bonus to mining. So just by the fact that we're flying a venture, we get twice as much ore during our mining. We also have this bonus to ship warp core, warp core strength. This is a more advanced topic, but if you were in a dangerous area where people did want to like kill you, okay? Normally, if you can't attack, you would just try to maybe warp away. You know, right click on something, warp, and then try to warp out before they kill you. Excellent, you're safe. Ships can pack various modules that can prevent you from warping away. The Venture has a bonus to its warp core strength. It's very difficult for any one person. In fact, it might be impossible for one person to stop you from warping away, unless they really wanted to. This It's really easy to be able to always escape as a venture and escape ganks, which is kind of nice. Again, if we're going to be in high security space, it's not much of a thing, but I love the venture. And it's got tons of space. If we go ahead and look at the attributes, um, so it's only got the 50 cubic meters of car cargo capacity, but it has an ore hold over here with five thousand cubic meters it can hold tons of ore and mine very fast awesome so let's go ahead and equip some stuff on our ship we're gonna go and throw hey we want to mine with it right let's throw a miner one awesome um and uh let's go and put on two guns sure let's do that these light electron blasters we're gonna add one then i'm gonna add the other what i got an error can't fit the light electron blaster because your ship doesn't have any turret slots left but i have an extra slot here what's the deal well, while the Venture has three high power slots, it only has capacity for two turrets. Let me show you where we can see that. First of all, if we get info, we can go to the fitting tab over here. Um, high power slots, three. Well, we're using two of three right now. We got three medium and one low. But there's an icon over here. This is how many turret hard points we can use. We have room for two turrets. And actually, you can see that on a fit as well right up there. Let me, um, let me strip this down again. Yeah, don't ask me again. There we go. So you can see how they're empty. If I go and put a minor module, a minor module is uses a turret slot. There we go. One of our turret slots is filled. If I put in an electron blaster, 
the second turret slot is filled. There was a little bit of a graphic glitch there, but it's filled. I can put something else in the high slot, but nothing that counts as a turret. So that will affect your design. There's lots of great stuff you can put in there. Um, I'm quite partial on putting a salvage module. Oh, by the way, your screen might look a little different. Your screen might look like this instead of like this. We're going to talk about what you can do with this later on, both the hulls and fit screen and the hardware screen. Let me just close this for now. So just keep in mind, there is a limit to the number of turrets, and sometimes there's a mismatch. So we can do this. The thing is, if we're going to be mining with this thing, really what we want are two minor modules. Now, unfortunately, I don't have another minor one. I could, if I remove the gun here, I could put in one of our civilian miners. But we know these civilian miners are terrible, and they're really slow. What I'd really like is another minor one. How do we get one of these? Well, for that, we have to turn to the market. So let me close these windows, and we're going to talk about the market. So there's a button over here for the regional market. This is where you can buy and sell everything in the game. And it's worth noting, um, as far as I know, you will never be selling anything to non-player characters. Only players will buy stuff from you. There can be non-player characters sellers for certain basic items in the game that will be provided in there. That, you know, it sort of bootstrap the economy, right? These, these items exist because some NPC somewhere sells it. But almost everything you're going to buy in practice is actually going to be from a player and not a non-player character. There's tons of different categories of stuff that you can go through. You know, planetary infrastructure, command centers. Ooh, that sounds kind of interesting. Ships. Oh, I want to I wanna buy a battle cruiser. Uh, sure, a standard battle cruiser from the Galente people. Ooh, a Brutix. That sounds quite cool. Oh, that costs 39 million isk. Ooh, that's quite expensive. Actually, it's cheaper than I would have thought, to be honest. How much money do we have? If you open a character sheet, or if you mouse over your character, you'll see it there. I currently have 831,000 isk. You'll probably have something fairly similar if you've been following along with this. So, I mean, we're not buying one of these, but and this was made by a player. All these are, are being are sold by a player over here. Now, worth noting that the sorting, you can sort by price. I think by default, it actually sorts by jumps. Now, this is how far away something is. Station is in literally the station you're in now, and this is something one jump away, two, three, 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 five jumps away, and so on. Your station won't necessarily have the cheapest one. So, uh, which is clearly the case with Brutix. There's someone in the station selling this Brutix for effectively 50 million isk. But if I sort by price, we can find one for 39 million if we're willing to just travel three jumps away, which is nothing. So I tend to like sorting by price. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll look, okay, find the station. Oh, if I want to buy it here, that's not necessarily worthwhile. Well, we're not here to buy a Brutix. What we want to buy is we want to buy a mining laser. Now, I don't know where in here it is. It could be in any kind of category. I think it's in ship equipment, but let's let's pretend I'm not sure. We're going to type in, in the search here, I'm going to type in mining one, mining I. Uh, or maybe it is one. Oh, it's miner! That's the problem. Miner I. Hey, there he is. So we've got two categories where there's something called miner I in here. Oh my god, my power just died, so my internet's probably gone. I'll probably get disconnected in a second. So, um, but there's blueprints that you can buy. And then there's the actual component itself. Yeah, it's not going to give me any prices because my power just died. Folks, we're 39 minutes in, 38 minutes in. I'm going to put a cut in here anyway. Couldn't talk really fast before I get disconnected. My computer dies. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.